Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Treasures Galore. My name is Michael Elder, and as always, I am your host for tonight. This is going to be the third video of my series of my saw. Now, the first video, there was it was a three video installment on where Walmart's halt. If you haven't checked that out, check that out. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, click the red subscribe button and hit the notifications bell so you can get notifications when my videos come out. And it would mean a lot to me if you did subscribe. So if if you're, you know, listening to this and, you know, you find me somewhat interesting, uh, it'd mean a lot to subscribe to my channel. So the first video, the third installment, was on where Warm Waters halt, and I talked about uh, Canyon Street, how it wasn't paved, and there was potholes on that street. And it was summer, so the, you know, the water would be warm. And then I also went through uh, the kettles and the, the scalding water with the uh, smell was terrible, and then the train station, and then the paved roads. So all of that led me back to Canyon Street. Now, the second video was Take It In The Canyon Down. Now, in The Thrill of the Chase, he uses Mountain Man logic and talks about uh, the sun comes up in the east and we thought out was south. Well, those two were directions, so if, you know, in would be north, if out was south, right, the sun comes up in the east, so down would be west. So in the poem, I believe it tells you to take it north and then west. And there's other um, quotes and stuff like that and Too Far to Walk and Once Upon a While that also confirm that for me. So that was my second video. So this is the third, and of course, we all know the poem. We probably have it memorized by heart. But so the poem goes, Begin it where warm waters halt and take it in the canyon down. Not far, but too far to walk. So, how far is too far to walk? And is that the first, second, third clue in the poem? What is it? Now, there's a lot of talk about the numbering of the clues. And to me, it may not make much difference you know what you have as long as you're falling from begin it and your quest to cease you know I feel like that makes sense if you're beginning it and then it's ending right here it is your quest and those are the lines where the the clues reside the nine clues and so you know, a lot of people don't even believe that where Warm Waters Hall is the first clue, even though Forrest Fan has told us that over and over again. And also, people bring up, a reporter was talking about, you know, they were reading the second stanza, and they said, begin at where Warm Waters Hall, you know, put in below the Homer Brown. And she says, sounds like a couple clues to me, and Forrest Fan replies, sounds like three or four to me. So, Forrest Fan, it sounds like in the second stanza, there are three or four. Now, I always hear people say, you know, he just said it sounds like. He's just messing with us. He didn't say it was. Well, there's another quote to this that people don't bring up. And I'm going to read from Terry Scant. The question is, you told a reporter that there are three or four, four clues in the second stanza. Were you telling the truth? Allison R. Forrest Fan replies, I don't know what it is about girls, but when I say something, they automatically ask if I'm lying. Shame on you, Allison R. I promise you that I get more things right than most reporters. If you were here, I'd make you take a dose of castor oil. Besides, if I lied to the reporter, what makes you think I would tell you the truth? Sorry, Allison. I'm off my soapbox now. No, I was not lying, but I don't remember a reporter asking me such a question. So... Again, she said, you told a reporter that there are three or four clues. Is this true? And he replies, I was not lying, but I don't remember a reporter asking me such a question. So, did you lie with three or four clues? And he says, no, I wasn't lying. There are, in fact, three or four clues 
in the second stanza. Now, could it be each four lines is a clue? Could be. Or maybe begin at where one water salt is the first clue. That's what Forrest Finn told us. He didn't lump and take it in the canyon down. It was only begin at where one water salt. So, could it be take it in the canyon down not far but too far to walk is one clue. You're going down this road and you go this distance. Could be. I don't know. I'm not here to debate any of that. It, it could go either way in my mind. So, we know that there are three or four clues in the second stanza. But, how, if you're not using the book, and this goes with almost anything in the poem, how are you going to determine these clues? If you're looking up the definitions of each word, there are countless definitions for each one. Waters, warm, halt. So to me, it doesn't make sense to just use the poem. Now, it is possible to find it, absolutely. But how, like, how likely are you to find it with just the poem, with just going off the definitions of the words and grammar? Not likely. Could you win the lottery four times in a row? Absolutely. It is possible. Is it likely? No, it is not, po or not likely at all. So, how far... Is too far to walk. Now, like I always say in my videos, I am a book purist. I always try to tie all the quotes, all the scrapbooks, the other two memoirs, Too Far to Walk and Once Upon a While, and any other thing Forrest Finn has told us, I always try to tie it back to the thrill of the chase. Now again, he told us, if you are serious about finding this treasure, this is what I would do. That's Forrest Finn speaking. Read my book. Then read the poem, and then read my book again. He's told us that countless times. Read his book if you're really serious. If you really want to find a couple million dollars worth of treasure, you should read my book. Now, he also has said, and it was in the 2016 interview that Cynthia released a month or so ago, and he says, The finder of the chest will have read my book. He says they will. And he sounds pretty certain about, you know, the finder reading and studying the book. So it is important to read the book. Okay, I'm off my soapbox now. So how far is too far to walk? Now, it's all subjective with the person, right? How many hours are you walking? How fast are you walking? Is the person overweight? Are they old? Are they young? Are they, you know, an athlete? I mean, it all varies. So I did a quick Google search of how fast does the average person walk? So about 3.1 miles per hour. So in the poem it says, not far, but it is too far to walk. So, I mean, you could, you could end up with any amount of distance in using, well, you know, I think a mile is too far to walk, I would drive. Or maybe I could walk 20 miles in a day. It's all subjective on the person. So how do we ever figure out how far too far to walk is? Now, I have done a video on this before, but I'm going over my solve so I can tie it all back to the other quotes and hints that I brought up. So I believe that the thrill of the chase tells us how far too far to walk is. And that is 50 miles. So I'm going to go through all the books and show you all the times that he mentions 50 and most importantly the times when he mentions 50 as a distance, which is a lot. But the first point that I want to bring up is, like you all know, my key word is home. And I almost tied every single you know, point that I make back to this word, and that's how I get my clues. So, let's go to page 55 in The Thrill of Chase, and it's titled, The Long Ride Home. So, this chapter is just screaming, the long ride home means there's probably going to be a long ride to the home of Brown. So, in this chapter, he says, so off we went at 20 miles an hour and with almost no money. 
we had a flat about every 50 miles, so the car was packed with spare tires that we had salvaged from city dumps along the way. The war was on, and tires were hard to come by. That trip was really educational for us. So the next page, this is the reason why I believe too far to walk is 50 miles. So if you look on the screen right here, and then I'm going to read. In Wyoming, between, between Shoshone and Casper, we had some kind of slight misunderstanding, and I told him to just stop the dumb car and let me out. To my utter amazement, he did, and then drove away. It was on a long, straight stretch of the road with no cars or people around anywhere. Okay, so there's no one around, right, as I've gone alone in there. It was so far away, I don't, I don't think they even had coyotes out there. So, he was all alone on the straight stretch of road, and it was so far, I don't think they even had coyotes out there. I had no money, no coat, and no shoes. I remember sitting down beside the road for about an hour to consider my lot in life and ponder if anything was left of my future. No cars passed by, and it started to get cold. Your effort will be worth the cold. Let me, let me start again. No cars passed by, and it was getting cold, so I started walking on the paved road in my socks. After another hour or so, off in the far distance, I saw Skippy coming back for me. So, he's all alone, and it was so far away that they didn't even have coyotes out there. So, alone, and he's far away. And it started to get cold. So he started walking on the paved road. Okay? So the distance between Shoshone and Casper. So this one that I brought up. And I've looked up two different ones. And one of them said like 101 miles. And this one says 98.1 miles. So I guess it just depends on which point you're taking. But the distance between these two towns is pretty much a hundred miles. Now I know that he says he's in between and that could mean that you know he's closer or to each side maybe but to me this makes sense that he's saying it was in between it and it was so far away. Well what's the distance that would make you so far away from Shoshone and Casper? Well it'd be the halfway point. So if he he was getting cold, he started walking, and he goes out of his way to describe twice that it's far away, and he's walking. Now, they drove, so it's not far, but it is, at that point, it's too far to walk in the middle. It's too far to walk for him. So, cold, started walking, he was alone, it was far away, and it was on the paved road. Now, that ties me back to Canyon Street because that road's paved now. So he started walking on the paved road. That is the reason why I think uh, too far to walk is 50 miles. But there's another point that I want to bring up with all, this also, and then I'm going to go through a whole bunch of different other things. But So in the chapter, In Love with Yellowstone, he says, you may not be old enough to realize that there was a war going on and that everything was rationed, tires, gas, and lots of other stuff. So we drove about 35 miles an hour for 1,600 miles with no air conditioning or radio. Even so, my father always drove about 50 miles out of his way down a little dirt road to a one-room schoolhouse in Wyoming. So just in the chapter, The Long Ride Home that I was talking about, talks about 50 miles, exactly like the exact distance that he brings up in this, right? And he also brings up the war. The war was on. Well, that's exactly like In Love with Yellowstone. They're almost exactly the same. 50 miles. The war was on. Tires were rationed. He mentions paved road in the long ride home. Well, this one is a dirt road. And two, men two mentions of 50 miles. So I believe the keyword is home, 
and the long ride home explains how too far to walk is, how far it is. And, you know, maybe that's too obvious, but I haven't heard too many people use this chapter as, you know, too far to walk. So I hear a whole bunch of different, you know, people think they're close together or something like that or not. But, you know, just going off the book, you know, you can use your imagination all you want. But if you're going off the book, I don't understand how you could get, you know, that where one modest halt is, you know, even within a thousand feet of the treasure chest. I mean, he walked the mile to school every morning. That wasn't too far to walk for him. You know, maybe it is when you're 80 years old, but he wrote the poem, the poem for us. So, you know, going off the book, it completely makes sense. So let's just, let's go through a few things and I want to go through a few quotes, but I just want to, I'm not going to name them all and I'm not going to go through all the quotes. There is a lot, but I'm going to go through some instances in the thrill of chase too far to walk and once upon a while, just really quick. So, he says, oh, I messed up. So on page six, he wrote about 50 books and they were all clever. Talking about Eric Sloan. Now on page 12, he says this different, right? He says, he just stood there making his six bucks dash 50 an hour, which is a, kind of a weird way to say it. So I'm not going to bring up The Long Ride Home or the two chapters that I just brought up, but so I'll go to the next one, which is... Looking for Lewis and Clark. So on page 63, he says, We were about 50 miles from where we started, and Donnie was in good spirits again and start, started talking coherently. So, I mean, those chapters are pretty close together, and it's 50 miles. They drove about 50 miles down a little dirt road to a one-room schoolhouse, and then they had a flat about every 50 miles. And then a couple chapters later, he says, we were 50 miles from where we started. So, if you're driving from where one waters halt, that would be where you start, right? And then you drive 50 miles, and then that would be the end. That's the put-in point. So, the next one is... This doesn't mention 50, but I just want kind of want to bring it up, because my... My keyword is home, but the distance you travel from where one waters haul to the put in is a long distance. Now, from the where you put in from the home of Brown to the treasure chest, I believe, is either within 500 or 200 feet. Doesn't doesn't walk, you know. He it's not that long of a walk. There's no way he could have hauled, you know, all that stuff in a backpack you know, a long distance. And I believe he even said that it was less than a few miles. But I thought this was interesting. In Buffalo Cowboys, page 67. I lost my shoes in the ordeal. Okay? That happened in the long ride home, right? Skippy lost his car and Donnie lost his credibility. The long walk home was wet and cold and I didn't realize how much fun it had been. So, I believe he's talking about walking back to the home of Brown from the treasure and I believe that there's a water crossing and the long walk home was wet and cold I think you have to cross a little creek I do not believe you're gonna have to cross a huge river with rushing waters but I believe that you're probably gonna have to get to the other side of a creek probably so let me continue I'm probably missing some like yeah I missed where his his brother died at age 50. I missed that one. And I think he mentioned, yeah. So looking back now at almost 65 years, I had fond memories of that road trip. 
At age 50, he was plucked from life at the moment of his greatest blossom. So, he died at age 50, and that's right in the chapter, The Long Ride Home. I knew I was missing a couple. So, um, page 121, Flywater. And I apologize, guys. It is almost midnight, and this is the only time I had to record a video. So, just please bear with me if I'm stumbling my words. So, page 121 on Flywater, uh, he says... I thought they were really old, and I think that's funny because my wife and I have been married 57 years and we still look, she still looks young and, and good and thinks young. Excuse me, what I was really supposed to read was when my parents celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary. That's what I meant to say. Okay, so on page 128 of Golden Moore, he says, over the next 50 years, my electric, uh, Electric collections grew to excessive proportions. And I believe that is it for the thrill of chase. Now, it's just interesting that he mentions 50 miles three times. It's from where we started, talking about the long ride home. You know, to me, it, it's just screaming that there's a distance involved. So let's go to Too Far to Walk. Page 7. Dad always cooked enough fish for at least 50 people. Alright, let's go to... Let's go to river bathing is best. It's a good one. So he's talking about taking a shower at the Union Pacific Railroad Station. And the shower where he got warm water cost, well, it was 50 cents. So then he talked about riding his bike into Yellowstone Park. It was about 20 miles from where I seldom used, used dirt road, turned right, um, right off the main drag to the Firehole River. And he goes on to explain. I'll read. Just before the river, there on the right, was a green geyser pool, which spilled and spewed a small streamlet of boiling water that ran downhill for about 50 feet. So, there's another instance of 50 being used as a distance. And here's another good one. So, on page 96, he says, In the summer of 19, 1975, Peggy and I jumped into a rubber cruise liner at Camp Verde, Arizona, and floated the Verde River to Horseshoe Reservoir. It was a straight line distance of about 35 miles, but maybe 50 by river. Another instance of 50 miles. Why does he use 50 a lot? And especially with distances. So let's continue on page 101. He says, so... I brought this up in the canyon about north and west, but he meant he says the canyon about seven or eight times in this story, and talking about hunting a mountain lion in this canyon, and they pulled him up and out. Well, what I think is interesting, he says mountain lions were eating so many cows and calves in the 1960s that the Cattlemen's Association offered a $50 bounty. So, talking about the canyon, and he uses... $50 bounty. And then just kind of go through these real quick. On page 120, he talks about 50th Street. And then she proudly showed me the 50 medals and ribbons her husband had been awarded. Page 132. Mrs. Rockefeller was interested in the 50 or so pairs of beading of beaded Indian moccasins that were hanging from my ceiling. In one of my rooms. Let's continue. So this one's not exactly 50, but I thought it was interesting. In Cody, Wyoming, I visited the Buffalo Bill Center of the West. A few years later, I became a trustee of that great museum. I'm bragging when I say that everyone should go there on their way to Yellowstone, which is just 
54 miles west. So I think that's interesting because they this you know museum is 50 almost 50 54 miles west of well the border of Yellowstone Park where you enter. And I believe where Wilmore's Halt is the other entrance right there on right by Canyon Street. And it's about 50 miles away is where my solve was. So let's continue. Page 214. Forrest Finn, are you really 50 years old? And then she made a bumper sticker that said, Forrest Finn is 50 years old. Here's another good one. Page 43. Too far to walk. Those ruts are long gone, but the trail is still visible, and it passes less than 50 feet from my library window. Another 50 mention, mentioning distance. Page 232. She also was an impulsive maverick, and if she had been born 50 years later, she might have been a poster woman for feminist movement. Now that's an interesting... Uh, you know, thing that keeps getting brought up in throughout his books is feminism, which I think is interesting, and I'm going to make a video about that in a little bit. Okay, so he says on page 241, Mountain Man, I was behind my tree when the mountain man lined up for the shot, took aim, and fired. His face disappeared in a smash of smoke, and I heard a loud thud. His 50 caliber bullet hit Alexander Hamilton in the forehead. So, 50 caliber. And then page 246. My two daughters who are in their 50s told me they didn't know who Clark Gable was. So that's it for the thrill of chase. Now I'm only going to bring up one. I'm not trying to bore you guys. I just kind of want to get my point across that 50 comes up a lot and there's so much more. And, um, you know, it's brought up as in distances a lot in the books. And then along with the long ride home, with in between Jashoni and Casper, that distance is 100 miles, and yada, yada, yada. Okay, so this is the last one I'm going to bring up in the book. So on page, what page is this? 84. He says the evidence showed it to be somewhere about 46 miles north of where I lived. So that's... That's a big one, and that's the one that my solve is kind of based off of, is 46. It's about 50 miles. So, again, hopefully I didn't bore you guys, but, you know, I kind of want to get my point across. It, it's used a lot. It really is. Okay, so I'm going to go over a few quotes, and I'm just going to skip through these. Um, he must have taken about 50 photos. Uh, Roman city of... Uh, Sabratha, where 50 times I said against the ancient wall, 50%, um, during his 50 years, his dad took 50 sleeping pills, he wrote 50 books in 50 years, and yeah, he gets about 50 emails a day, and I mean, there's so many quotes where he uses 50, so I am going to end that with the quotes. Yeah, and so here's another one. If you type in 50, you spell it out, and then you do 50 again, it brings up a whole nother list of the things he brought up. So, okay, so enough of the quotes. I think we get the point. Forrest Finn uses the number 50 a lot, and he also uses 50 a lot as in describing distances. Like, you know, 50 by the river on the Mesa Verde. The trail is 50 feet away from his house. They had a flat about every 50 miles. They drove 50 miles out of their way to a one-room schoolhouse. They were 50 miles from where they started. And the water ran down uh, 50 feet. So, it run, you know, 50 is really used with distances a lot. And by itself. But here's another one point I wanted to bring up. And I, I brought this up and I in one of my last videos, but I didn't get a chance to explain it because I was live and kind of just rushed on. But the question is, do you think that someone who is sure about the location of the Homer Brown could reverse engineer where warm waters halt? Ben Raylor. Okay, 
so something that something that's interesting in the way he worded this. Do you think someone who is sure about the location of the home of Brown? So this person is sure. Now, Forrest Finn has told us you can't start in the middle of the poem. You have to begin at where at where Wilmar's halt, and there's no other way to his knowledge on how to solve it. Okay? So this guy's saying, okay, if you're sure, let's let's skip all that stuff, but let's just say you're sure that you know where Wilmar's halt. Could you reverse or Excuse me, you're sure where the Homer Brown is. Could you reverse engineer to where one water's hauled? Forcer replies, Thanks for the question, Ben. If you are sure about the location of the Homer Brown, why are, you, why are you concerned about where one water's hauled? But to answer your question, sure you could. And a few searchers might throw in some gas money for a percentage of the take. Good luck. Okay. So he's not saying if it's possible. He's just saying, yeah, well, I guess if you absolutely knew 100% that you had the right home of Brown, sure, you could go backwards and, you know, find the starting point. But why would you if you know 100% certain that the home, you know, that you have the home of Brown? Because the treasure's close to that. So the first clue wouldn't matter. But we know it does matter, and it's super important, and you can't start at home of Brown or in the middle of the poem. But what I thought was really interesting is he says that, but to answer your question, sure you could. He's talking about reverse engineering back to where one water's halt. And a few searchers might throw in some gas money for percentage of the take. Now, they're not talking about driving out to the chest and stuff like that. He's talking about starting at the home brown and reverse engineering back to where one water's halt. So why does he throw in you know, sure you could reverse engineer back there. And, you know, you could take a few searchers with you and throw in some gas money. So, to me, that's hinting at if you're reverse engineering back to where Wilmonters Hall and then back to the home of Brown to find the treasure, you're going to need gas money. So, just think about that. You drove where Wilmonters Hall, you drove to the home of Brown, 50 miles, you drove back 50 miles, and you drove back. That's 150 miles. You're probably going to need some gas money. And, you know, it might be taken a different way, and I'm using confirmation bias on this one, but to me it seems interesting talking about reverse engineering from home of Brown or the long ride home back to where Wilmonters Hall and then back again. Sure you could. A few searchers might throw in some gas money for a percentage of the take. Okay, so what else do I want to bring up here? Okay, I talked about three or four clues, how how far a person can walk in a day, three point or in an hour, 3.1. So this is where I'm going to end the video. So, you know, it's just interesting to me because everyone brings up, you know, the key word. Well, I think it's this, and I think it's that. And I'm not discounting anyone on what anyone thinks. But the problem I have with most people that I hear is that they don't give an explanation, or maybe they just don't want to because they think I'm going to steal it from them. But they don't give a reason or definite answer on how, how does this word help you more than the others it you know how would it how are you applying this keyword to help you more than the other words in the poem now all the nouns are important it's risky to discount any of them but there's one word and it is in the poem Forrest Finn clarified that that helps you more than others so how are you how are you doing that and so I'm, I'm explaining that my keyword is home, and I get the long ride home, so that's too far to walk. He's talking about running away from home, you know, so no place for the meat, through a cemetery. And he uses his house in the thrill of the chase, you know, and it goes hand in hand with the home of Brown. Now again, people are like, oh, you're thinking the home of Brown is his house? No, I don't, okay? I do not think that. Forrest Finn lived in Temple, Texas. And that is not north of Santa Fe. I'm just saying he's using it to describe the home of Brown on the places that he went from his house. 
And if you haven't checked out my other videos about running away from home and, you know, no place for the meek, uh, go check it out. But I will get to those in, you know, a subsequent video. So how are you using the keyword? So I use my keyword in this, and it says the long ride home, and that's how I got too far to walk in between Shoshone and Casper, along with the countless mentions of 50 miles. So it makes sense to me. If you're using the book and you're going off of the stories, you know, we know, I mean, it would make sense that it would be more than a mile. Now, why would he tell you if it, you know, it's too far to walk if it's literally a thousand feet? And then, you know, he's talking about you have to drive to the first clue, but you're not, what does put in mean in the poem? Now, to me, it makes sense that you begin at where Walmart's halt, you're driving, you're taking it, and you park below the home of Brown. You don't get to the home of Brown. You're parking below it, whether that's in elevation or south or, you know, however you want to determine that. But you don't get to the home of Brown. And then put in means you park. So it makes sense to me that there is some sort of distance involved that, you know, is m probably more than a mile, I would imagine, because Forrest Finn walked a mile to school every mornings. But then again, you know, Forrest Finn told us he walked like 91 miles. Don't quote me on that number. It was something like 91 miles to Bozeman. And he walked the, I think it was a, Gallatin River or something like that, I believe. And w when he was younger, and that story seems really far-fetched because he's talking about they saw this mama with her bear cubs, and the bear cubs couldn't get up this little ledge, so they picked the cubs up and threw it to their mother, which is a tall tale if I've ever heard one. That bear would eat you alive. <laughs> so, anyways, I mean, it's all subjective, and that's why I'm just trying to use the book and everything, and I kind of want to get my point across too, is that with these three clues, I have not brought any inside or outside information from the thrill of the chase. Everything is in the thrill of the chase. Now I do use the other memoirs to confirm what's in the thrill of the chase, but it always leads back to the thrill of the chase, always. And that's the whole point of my channel, that's the whole point of my solve, is using the book and placing it on a map and following it precisely to where, you know, where the treasure is. So, anyways, uh, yeah, I think I've talked long enough for this one. Hopefully I didn't bore you with all the quotes, but... Anyways, guys, I believe Too Far to Walk is 50 miles. Now, if you disagree with me, which I'm sure... Most of you will, maybe, some of you might agree with me, but I would love to hear how you come to that conclusion. Now, giving me a distance isn't going to give out anything if you don't know the starting point, you know what I mean? So, don't use that excuse, just explain to me, and you know, you always got to tie it back to the thrill of chase, explain to me how you got what you got. You know, I I would love to hear you know, your opinion on what you think. And, yeah, just let me know what you think. Email me, mikeelder89 at gmail.com. Comment, uh, add me on Facebook, uh, whatever you want to do. Write me on Messenger. Uh, just hit me up. And, you know, I try to respond as quick as I can. I do work in the oil field, and stuff's a little crazy. But, you know, here I am making a video. It's 12.05 a.m., and I got to get up at 6, so going to regret this tomorrow, but I really wanted to get a video out for you guys. It's been like four days, and I know I keep promise about going live. I am going to go live, I promise you, you know, on my channel. I'd love to get on there and answer, you know, questions and talk with the chat room. That way I can just focus my time on you guys, you know, being alone, and I'm not going to have a set date for that. Me and Carter are going live at 6 Mountain Time every Sunday, but I'm going to try to go live, you know, another time in the week, but I can't give a definite time because my, my schedule, you know, just matters how much I get done in a day is when I get home. So, 
I'm going to do that. Uh, like I said before, guys, it would really mean a lot to me if you subscribe to my channel, if you haven't, if you're watching this. And no, I did not forget, I am giving a giveaway for the Indian Pottery. Uh, I got to figure out how to do a video and then do the random, you know, comment picker that other people use. That way everyone knows it's just random and it's the luck of the draw. I'm not doing not picking any favorites. So if you want to get entered to that and you like my content, subscribe, and I will see you guys on the next video.